Hey, Tiana. Hey, Becky. <laughs> How are you doing this evening? I am fantastic. I just got back from the dentist. I love yeah. going to the dentist. I do. I haven't been to the dentist in about a decade. A decade? It's oh, I'm really so sorry. Bad. Yeah. It scares you? Uh huh. Oh, I'm sorry. <sighs> Oh, it's buggy out here. Yes, as I mentioned, I am I'm outside, um, which is neat. I don't know if you can hear the frogs and the crickets, but this is a it's a hot Georgia night. I'm <laughs> sitting on my screened in back porch. There's a I just noticed there's a barbecue sauce stain from dinner here on the table and the crickets are moaning and groaning and there's probably we may even catch some really nasty big roaches on camera while I'm out here. They huh? have to basically be crawling on your face to catch them on camera. Well, you never know. I mean, those things could happen. Uh, sorry, I think something's crawling on my eye. Probably. Yeah. Uh, it is screened what in. What outdoors in the south is about. doesn't matter if it's screened <laughs> in. Yeah, it's part of what I love about it, though. Oh, listen to those crickets. So I came out here because I know we wanted to talk about, we had a really important issue that we needed to discuss today, and that is um, how are our ghosts handling the quarantine. I usually record in my bedroom where my ghost is, but. Oh, but you wanted to keep this a private conversation. Right, More exactly. Candid. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, though, can you really own a ghost? I say it's my ghost, but I don't, I don't want to, that may not be very proper. I was actually just doing episode show notes research earlier, mm -hmm. just a few hours ago, and found out that no, according to random people on Quora, no, you cannot own a ghost, but you can befriend a ghost. Well, I, I think I definitely have. Oh, you, so, your ghost likes you as much as you like them? Yeah, it's, it's a good relationship, I think. So what are you drinking? Well, I have some wine here in my ridiculously tiny wine glass. I have to hold it close to the camera I know, for it's, it to look big enough. It's so delicate. You're like, you've got the vintage haircut, the vintage, it looks like a little, a lady sherry glass from the 1890s. It actually is probably because it came out of this antique Biedermeyer china hutch that I have in the dining room because I don't actually own wine glasses. I own wine plastics for travel in a van because when you live in a van <laughs> drinking wine out of a plastic wine glass is <laughs> the epitome of culture i love it we are both so classy and yet so trashy <laughs> i'm drinking warm gin i just threw up in my mouth a little bit <laughs> why are you drinking warm gin Yuck. i don't have a good reason you know what i'm drinking it <laughs> also wanted to mention that we are um we are so good at this like paranormal sci-fi thing that we just missed two major holidays <laughs> back to back. What, Earth Day? No. no. <laughs> so what? May the 4th. Oh, that is a major holiday. May and the then... 4th and yeah. May the 3rd is National Paranormal Day. No way. Yeah, and we just... <laughs> we were so focused on delivering good content that we didn't even notice those holidays happened. Okay, so anyway, we're here to talk about ghosts. Of course. How the ghosts that we have befriended, or who have befriended us, or who just happen to cohabitate with us, are dealing with the fact that we are always around. <laughs> we never leave them anymore. I know. And I know you had quipped the other day that Luis's portrait would have been like, upset about people quarantining because they'd never leave her alone sorry about the yipping in the background so oh, that's, that's okay not an evp that's a crested um but <laughs> it it does it does seem like there are certain hauntings that would want you to hang around and play forever and ever and ever exactly and there are certain hauntings that might prefer you to get out <laughs> what do you want oh. Well, I'm trying to figure it out a little bit. So I was really worried that my ghost had left me. So, you know, for a few weeks there, around a little bit before this whole apocalypse started, I had been feeling this thing was, was tugging at my nightshirt when I was trying to sleep. And then I felt it jump on my legs at night. I I mean, it felt just like the cat, but the cat wasn't there. I mean, it was just like the cat. 
And it was, so it was pretty. so real that the next night when the cat did jump on my legs, I freaked out and screamed because it felt exactly <laughs> the same. It jumped on me and like was pulling on me and stuff. And I mean, I sat up in bed and looked and the cat was in the chair and there was a depression on the bed over my legs. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I don't, I mean, but you know what? It's kind of like a lot of times that would our guests say that it wasn't a, uh, bad feeling I didn't feel disturbed I was just like that's probably not supposed to happen (laughs) and then a few nights later I felt something rubbing my back and friendly way in a friendly (laughs) way I don't know maybe it's in in a romantic way no no like like a mother would would you know comfort yeah yeah I really think it's female it doesn't feel lecherous or anything like that so and then there was the roach incident i told you about that you did yeah a few nights later i I woke up with a start and this massive roach fell in my hand in the bed because we're in georgia and i woke up and screamed and insisted that we never found it in fact i'm not entirely sure that it happened it could have been a dream because it was like right when I woke up and I saw something in my hand and then it went away. All those things I was feeling, maybe it wasn't a ghost, maybe it was a roach. Oh no, but a depression that jumped up on your legs. I really can't imagine big roach. That. Yeah, they, they grow them big there in Atlanta, but still. Anyway, I, well, so I guess I convinced myself that it was a roach and I think I pissed off the ghost. Because <gasps> they, you were denying its existence. Yeah, so the ghost didn't come back for a while. Huh. And then I started getting sad because we have a fucking paranormal podcast. I need to have a ghost. Otherwise, what are we going to talk about? Exactly. I mean, besides our ghosts, but like our guests, <laughs> ghosts, guests, ghosts. <laughs> guest ghosts are good. Yes, but, but I mean, you know, we like to share our own stories. And I was like, gosh, I need this thing to come back. So I kind of um, worked myself into it tizzy frizzle tizzles whatever last night i'm a little out of it this morning this is it morning <laughs> oh dear god here have some more gin that's warm oh oh i was so focused on getting our episode published in time sunday night monday morning that i neglected some of my client work Oh, no. Oh, it's okay. I got got it done. But I was like, last night, I was like, I'm going to figure this out so that on Monday, um, I'm going to be in great shape to finish this up. And uh, so I was up till about 1 a.m. last night battling with this code Mm -hmm. in front of a screen with all that blue light. Got it figured out. But then I couldn't get to sleep. And I do not suffer from insomnia. This is not something I usually have a problem with could not get to sleep that happens yeah backtrack a little bit before i lay down to sleep finally at one in the morning i said out loud to the ghost because i missed it and i really want there to be a ghost i said i haven't heard from you in a while did you leave me i miss you i said that out loud my husband mumbled he's like hi we're here i'm like no no i'm not talking to you finally got to sleep and at three in the morning that's when it decided to come back it was like hey i have these um hooks on my wall that i have chains and necklaces and things hanging off necklace chains i don't have chains in my bedroom that would be really i wasn't gonna blame you for i yeah (laughs) no my bedroom's not that erotic it was necklaces hanging like it's just but like you know like a bunch of chains of necklaces and things with pendants and whatnot um but i have them hanging on hooks so they don't get tangled in a jewelry box and I have about six of these lined up and they vary like, you know, I've got the plastic costume jewelry and then the, and it gets finer and nicer as it gets closer to the bed. So the middle hook has like junky stuff, not fine jewels, but not the plastic stuff I bought in the subway station, like the sort of in-between stuff. And so this stuff starts shaking and banging against the wall. 
mm -hmm. all the chains and um, necklace and stuff. Just like, it's a gentle rattling. There's like, <laughs> and at first I'm like, oh crap, do we have a rat in the wall? Oh God, let's hope not. No, because it was consistent. It was in the exact same place. And the cat was like, what? That's nothing. <laughs> How long did this go on? It happened, well, so it happened once, and I was like, oh, it's probably nothing. Maybe it's something outside, because it's also an exterior wall. And then it happened again, exactly the same. Same pattern. Da, 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 da. Five taps with the necklace just shaking. Then it happened three more times, and it got louder and louder each time. Ooh. And the necklaces started shaking more vigorously. And finally, I rolled over and I said, leave me alone. I'm too tired right now. And it stopped. Yeah. Why has it got to be three? In it's the morning? It's got to be 3 a.m., right? It's got to be three in the morning, right? Nice. It woke me up. I mean, it was loud enough. It woke me up. I was like, damn it. I was really excited to talk to you, but you got to have all nights. <laughs> Timing. All right. Oh, <sighs> I'm sorry. Not a train. Not an earthquake. Not a no. spider jet of some sort. No, it was low over your house. <laughs> necklaces rattling. And honestly, I don't know Amazing. how like something in the wall or outside the wall would have caused my necklaces to shake. Yeah. And it was only one. It was only the middle one. Only the center one. Only oh, the center wow. one. The ones okay. on either side were fine. Huh. Well, that's fascinating. That's definitely more communication right there in one single rattle than my... Um, purported basement ghost has ever given me you're right because i did kind of say not now and it stopped mm -hmm. that's see, a big interaction yeah you see why i'm out here i don't want him or her carrying me <laughs> <laughs> well so do you think that the haunting of your bedroom ceased or slowed because of the quarantine and you're spending all your time at the house it definitely correlated there's a part of me that wonders if because I'm so stressed out by what everything that's going on, I'm just not as open to it. Okay. That's, that was kind of the first thought I had. Um, or maybe, it, I mean, it also happened alongside that roach falling thing. So maybe I chose not to believe. I don't know. But I mean, I insulted that you thought it was a roach. Yeah, maybe. But yeah. I mean, it was the first time I actually spoke out loud to it was oh, last really? night. Yeah, oh, okay. usually I'm just kind of like, eh, when's it going to come back? Like, I would, like, I would, like, leave my foot hanging out of the bed covers. Like, maybe I'll grab my foot. That's psychologically damaging, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Having your foot hanging off the bed. Oh, I hate that. I know. Isn't that creepy? Because you just know something's going to come up from under your bed and grab it. I don't know. Evolutionary trait superstition I don't know what it is but yeah I, I absolutely hate having my foot hanging off the edge of the bed even my oh, hand yeah. when my hands on the edge of the bed I have to be like oh yeah <laughs> I know I know I don't like it either well especially because of that time that something grabbed it that was pretty creepy you know that's probably enough to train you not to keep it there yeah yeah anyway anyway so <laughs> so yeah that's what's been going on with me so nice. yeah so I'm, I'm hoping that um, maybe, of course, yeah, I'm drinking warm gin, so I'm probably not going to be in any position to have a meaningful relationship with the ghost this evening. But maybe in the near future, we can establish more contact and I can find out a little bit more about it. Yeah, I mean, if this is the first time you've ever spoken to it and it reacted like that, that's pretty amazing. I know. I and you know, the crazy thing is if I hadn't been so tired, I probably would have like been like, oh, what's going on? But I was like, did you not now? Leave me alone. I want to sleep. Like it just was a sort of a knee jerk reaction mm -hmm. to say that. Interesting. So it got a little bit less haunted or not at all haunted. Started quarantining yourself and had a potential uh, sleep paralysis experience with a roach hallucination potentially. I don't know what it was. Something. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I never, maybe there wasn't a roach. Mm. It was like the minute I opened my eyes, I thought I saw something dark in my hand and then it was gone. Like I felt something hit my hand and then it was gone. It was dark, but I didn't see where it went. 
I don't know. Maybe it was the ghost's hand. But with, with the roach, you would feel it hit, and then you would feel it scuttling. I didn't feel it scuttling. It just yeah. it was like it jumped. Do roaches jump? No, not really. But have you, have you ever had a roach crawl on your skin when you didn't know it was a roach? I'm going to say probably not. I've had insects crawl on my skin, but not roaches, per se. Ro- it's, it's actually, if you don't know it's a roach, it's not unpleasant. It's very strange. It's almost a soft kind of like, oh, what is that? <gasps> <laughs> Not unpleasant until you look down. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, if you, you walk along a poolside in Florida at night barefoot, you've had this happen. So that's why when the, the, the rubbing of my back, that's why I was like, maybe, because it wasn't unlike that. However, when that was that thing was pulling on me, I reached down with my hand to feel, and there was nothing there, and it kept happening. Huh. And that was tugging. That was something with opposable digits yeah. tugging on me, and that it, was so real. It can't be a sleep paralysis experience if you're actually like physically reaching for it. Because... Oh, I was completely able. I was just pretending to be asleep. <laughs> Your turn, honey. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Well, anyway, I haven't had too much interaction with my purported basement ghost for a long time now. Um, Ever since I asked her to please leave, you know, leave me alone, um, because I was starting to get spooked going up and down the stairs, and then I heard the the knock, Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'll leave you alone, and then I didn't feel or hear anything until I got poked down there in the shoulder. Mm Mm-hmm. A very creepy feeling to have right, someone yes. finger poke you in the back when there's nobody there and you're alone. <sighs> but other than that, I haven't had too much going on. So I think possibly the whole quarantine thing is kind of satisfying her. Oh, because you're around all the time. Right. And, mm-hmm. and she's, you know, according to some, she might be a motherly presence. I think she's kind of pleased that the kids are all in the nest and <laughs> sticking around. Because the only the only reminder I've had is that one little poke, just like a "Hey, pay attention, I'm mm-hmm. still here." But usually, I get a, a disapproving feeling. You know, like I have to kind of flee quickly. Well, back to our topic at hand: Are the ghosts happy or sad that we're in quarantine and spending all of our goddamn time with them i'd like to know from the people on our facebook page i'd like to know know from them both of our ghosts have been far more hands-off since the quarantine started right right? so i i don't know whether that's a sign of approval or whether that's a sign of disappointment or what but i'm curious if anybody has any input Uh, as to what that could possibly mean that our ghosts are leaving us alone yeah i would really like to know so if people could let us know how, how your ghosts are doing, how they're what handling does this it. Mean? Why aren't they talking to us and poking us while we're quarantined? Right? Are they tired of us? Do they have a small attention span and they're like, oh, this is, this is status quo now, having this human around. Right, exactly. It's just not interesting anymore. Our ghosts are getting used to us. They have nothing to say to us anymore. Right. They're so used to us. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. Well, I think we, we definitely should open this up for comments. We want to know how people's ghosts, how their haunted houses are doing. I mean, I remember when this all started thinking, gosh, it would really suck to be quarantined in a haunted house. But, you know, maybe it's not so bad. That's true. Right there, it's just true. kind of leave. moping around going, what the hell am I doing today? <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, you know, there's, you know, part of the ghost mythology is that when you die in a home you can never leave it so i gotta get out of here (laughs) i was gonna say i mean in a way this is like practice for the afterlife oh god (laughs) i already have all my dreams in this house no (laughs) i don't want to never leave i'm gonna die in the ocean (laughs) that sounds nice yeah (laughs) if i have to haunt somewhere it's gonna be the freaking beach right and see (laughs) <laughs> well thank you for joining me for a warm drink this evening <laughs> my wine was warm and then i switched uh to beer in a wine glass oh i only had 
half a glass of wine left in my wine bottle. But the point is now I have a cork to make a new homespun, homespun paint, paint um, seal. Yeah. Seal stamp. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. These are so cool. So excited about it. <laughs> I keep finding little stamps all over my floor because I made a ton of them as prototypes. It's crazy. Oh, Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing what else may happen while I'm I stuck guess, inside with this ghost. I guess I shall not talk to my ghost then. Yeah. She's kind of rude. Yeah, she is. Grabbing at me, poking at me. I'm kind of a bitch. She doesn't even clean up when there's a flood in the basement. Like... She just leaves it there. Oh dear Sorry. God! Was it's that the okay. roach? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> have a spooky night. Have a spooky night, Diana, <laughs> and happy belated National Paranormal Day. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.